This is a monocular patient with congenital glaucoma. He has a large ophthalmic eye. Um, he has had a previous penetrating keratoplasty on this eye done one year earlier and now has a dense nucleosclerotic cataract that we are doing surgery on. Um, we're going to stain the anterior capsule with vision blue and then perform the uh, capsulotomy. These, these large congenital glaucoma eyes tend to have flimsy capsules, weak zonules, and some anatomical abnormalities relative to normal eyes. Here we're making the clear cornea incision and I want to avoid breaking the running suture. Usually I will remove the running suture before doing cataract surgery, but in this monocular patient with one diopter of astigmatism after the graft, I felt it was best to leave the um, running in place. Um, we're doing a routine uh, capsular rexus, and all the rex although the rexus looks uh, somewhat Small, it's actually quite large because this is a very large eye. Hydrodissection of the uh, nucleus is performed. And uh, fake emulsification will be carried out in a pretty routine fashion. Here I'm going to use a standard uh, chopping technique. Uh, that I use in most of my cases. I'm going to reach around behind the nucleus with a phaco chopper and then drive into the lens and split the nucleus in two. Rotate the lens and repeat the uh, chopping maneuver. And this uh, is a nice technique because it puts very little stress on the zonules. Again, the nucleus is rotated and another fragment sliced off, and this can be taken easily as well. This is a dense cataract, but there's plenty of room here to work, as this is a very large eye. After removal of the uh, last nuclear fragment, irrigation and aspiration of cortex is carried out, and this goes uh, rather routinely and smoothly as well. Um, it is a bit difficult to visualize the uh, anterior capsule rim because of the um, pupil coming down a bit. Uh, so a uh, Krugelin hook is used to push the pupil out of the way so I can see the anterior capsule rim and vacuum under it and check all the um, areas uh, of the uh, bag to make sure there's no residual cortex. The capsular bag is now filled with viscoelastic and we're going to place a capsule tension ring in the side because again it is a very large eye and we want to um, provide support for the capsular bag. And here I'm starting to inject the uh, capsule tension ring and I want to make sure that I'm actually in the right place in the capsular bag. So I'm going to stop, use a Krugel and hook, retract the iris so I can better see the anterior capsule rim and make sure I'm in the right place. And now that I've ascertained that I'm in the right place, I'm going to um, inject the, re the uh, capsule tension uh, ring into the capsule bag. When I do this, I can see a little change in the reflex coming from the posterior capsule and after the ring is injected I inspect the posterior capsule and see that there's actually a posterior capsule tear or split that has occurred during injection of the capsule tension ring. On inspecting here you can see the uh, split in the posterior capsule so I've made a decision for better visualization to add iris retractors and after adding five iris retractors it's clear that there's a posterior capsule tear 
that has split around anteriorly and created a radial tear coming from posterior to anterior. And now the uh, question arises how to secure the lens as the sulcus on this patient is too large for sulcus fixation of an implant. I made the decision to use a star uh, silicone lens as this has a long haptic length and inject the lens um, anteriorly and then manipulate it into the capsule bag as gently as possible trying to prevent the capsule bag from splitting further. Here I'm injecting the uh, first part of the lens leaving the trailing haptic out and now I will uh, tr as gently as possible try to tuck the leading haptic under the anterior capsule rim but not through the uh, tear in the posterior capsule. So I'm trying to put very little downward pressure on the lens here and just sort of sneak it into the recess of the capsule bag. Once this is done, I'm going to use a pair of um, micro forceps to um, perform a handshake technique, uh, grab the trailing haptic, and tuck it under the anterior capsule in the capsule bag. So now both haptics are located in the capsule bag but away from where the radial tear in the uh, capsule is. I'm now going to gently rotate the lens into the position that I feel it is least likely to end up um, within the uh, portion of the damaged capsule but within and supported by the capsule bag. Once this is done and I feel that the lens is secure I've removed the iris attractors, placed three sutures in the uh, incision uh, to secure it, and now I'm going to remove the residual viscoelastic with a pair of separate irrigation and aspiration hand pieces. The residual viscoelastic is removed and there is no evidence of any vitreous uh, presentation here. The implant seems very uh, well supported and well centered and in good stable position and it did remain this way throughout the post-operative period. The patient uh, ended up um, one week post-op with 20-25 uh, uncorrected vision and uh, he has remained uh, stable without any um, movement of the intraocular lens from where it was placed uh, during surgery.